Let's start with Mayo. Let me ask you this. What has this coaching staff fixed other than adding the more talented, much more talented Drake May at quarterback? From week one to yesterday, what has this coaching staff done well? It's a legitimate, genuine question. I'm not trying to be a smartass. What has this coaching staff improved? Is there one thing they do better now than they did week one? Aside from the quarterback switch, is there anything, is there anything that they do better? I honestly can't give you an answer. Can you honestly come up with an answer? Do they run the football better? I mean, I guess you could say maybe pass protection, but that also, again, as I said earlier, has a little bit to do with Drake May. But what do they do fundamentally better? Are they more disciplined? No. Are they less penalized? Not really. Are they disciplined on the field as far as, you know, gap integrity, run fits against the run game, right? No. What have they fixed? And that's why, like, I'm not asking for a lot from Gerard Mayo. I'm honestly not. I've said this from the beginning. It's going to be a steep learning curve. We went through this the last couple of months. We went through this when he was hired. There's going to be a steep learning curve. I don't expect Gerard Mayo to know everything by week seven, first year in in the NFL as a head coach. But I do want to see improvement. I want to hang my hat on something and say, well, they got better at doing that. Terry jumps in with a $50 super chat. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. From week one to what we watched yesterday, what does this team do better? It just I'm not asking for a bunch of things. I'm not asking for a list from Gerard May. I'm, a, I'm asking for a couple of things. A couple of things. Thank you so much, Terry. The generosity, again, the $50 super chat. It is so much appreciated. Let's go over it. Has their run defense improved? No. Their run defense continues to suck. Has the clock management improved? No. The clock management has not improved. Did you enjoy again the end of the first half? You see what happened? The same damn thing. The same damn thing that happened against the Seahawks. The same damn thing that happened against the Dolphins. Happened yesterday. Before the half, you got timeouts in the pocket, and you can't pick a lane. You run the football. You run the football on the first down. Guess what? It goes nowhere. Your running game's doing nothing. As soon as you run the football in that instance, you're waving the white flag, but not Van Pelt and Mayo because we've seen this again against Seattle, against Miami. They run the football, and then they throw it on back-to-back downs. Guess what happens? The same thing that happened against Seattle, the same thing that happened against Miami. Now, fortunately, Barringer pinned the Jacksonville Jaguars Doug Peterson said, we're going to go to halftime. We're fine. But again, you gave the football to the opposition with time on the clock and with them having timeouts because you mismanaged the end of the half. Gerard Mayo said, I'm not a repeat offender when he got this job. They are doing nothing but repeating the same mistakes. The end of the first half clock management has been a problem. That's the third time that they haven't picked a lane. You either play the clock or you play the game. If you play the game, you throw the football, you come out aggressive. If you play the clock, you run. When you choose to run the football, that's pretty much it. Yes, you're hoping that you can pop a 30-yard run, but did anybody think that before the end of the half yesterday, the Patriots were going to be capable of popping a 30-yard run? And we saw it again yesterday. Then late in the game, again, clock management. You take a timeout after the first stop, against Jacksonville, right? You stop the run against Jacksonville. There's about five minutes or so left. You take a timeout. Once you take that first timeout after the first down play, if you stop them on second down, guess what? You take a timeout. They took a timeout after the first run down, uh, first down stop. They stop them on second down. They don't call a timeout. They let 40 seconds go off the clock. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're not doing it right. The the back-breaking flags, the penalties over and over and over again. Let me ask you another question. Throw it in the comment section. What's the identity of this football team? I've asked this question now the last few weeks. What's the identity of this football team? 
What, what do they what do they do well? What, what do they try to do? We we were told that this that this team was going to run the football. They and but before yesterday, when your run game was awful, they bailed on the run game when they were actually running the football pretty well in prior weeks. What what is the identity of this football team? It's week seven. It's week seven, and we don't have an identity of the football team. It's a messy operation. And then you get the soft team stuff. Mayo comes out yesterday at the podium, and he says this, quote, we're a soft team across the board. That's what Mayo said. We're a soft team across the board. And I said to myself, all right, he's calling the players out, right? That's his moment. The head coach just drew the line in the sand. We're a soft team. We're a soft team across the board. That, that's what he said yesterday after the game. Then he goes on Greg Hill this morning on WEEI and says, we don't have a soft football team. We're playing soft. Beep, 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 beep. He's backing up the truck. He's moonwalking like Michael Jackson. He, he. Like, what are we doing here? You, you just said yesterday that your team is soft across the board. You made a statement. You made a statement. You called your team out. And then less than 24 hours later, you're on local radio saying, we don't have a soft football team. We're just playing soft. Did you realize that you stepped in it, Gerard? Did you realize that you said a little bit too much when you called them soft? You might have pissed off the locker room, and because of that, now you're backtracking? Certainly seems like that's the case. If you're going to say something like that, if you're going to say something like that, like you said yesterday, then you have to stand by it. Because if you fold in less than 24 hours, then it doesn't matter what you say. If you call somebody out, it's not going to matter. Messaging is a problem. Discipline is a problem. Alex Van Pelt, let's get to him. Great script. This is not being sarcastic. I'm actually clapping for Alex Van Pelt's script yesterday. I did not think that you could script the first 15 plays or so of a football game better than Van Pelt did. Honestly, with the quarterback that he had, he relied on play action. He moved Drake May around, right, in and out of the pocket. He manipulated the pocket with his quarterback. He called a perfectly timed screen to Antonio Gibson. He called a perfectly timed gun run. But then what happened? As soon as the script is over with, you know what we're learning? That as soon as the, and I'm not talking about, you know, success because people will sit there, they'll, they'll talk about the results, right? I, I know multiple people tweeted at me saying, yeah, Nick, yeah, Nick, but th that's the first time they scored points on the first drive of a game. I understand that. I'm talking about conceptually. Conceptually, going into a game, the script makes a lot of sense. You can't always account for players' execution. You just can't. But going into a game, the first 15 plays or so, Van Pelt, he, he generally has a really good plan going in for the fi first 15 plays. And we saw that yesterday. It made all the sense in the world. Moving around his athletic and mobile quarterback, working off of play action, right? And then what happened? What, what we see from Van Pelt is a guy that has been incapable of adjusting during a game, understanding the moment, understanding what his team is doing well, understanding what his team is not doing well, and adjusting off of that and getting the most out of his offense. We don't see that from Van Pelt, folks. We see a guy who goes in with the first 15 plays with a pretty good idea. And then the defense reacts to that. The defense starts to take away certain things, and Van Pelt is just on the sideline looking around. Yesterday, you, you come out, and the quarterback is playing great. Quarterback's playing great. And then you decide that you're just going to keep running the football into a wall. Over and over and over and over again. Just keep running the football into the wall. Andrew Callahan posted, the Patriots, 8.3% success rate when running the football yesterday. 8.3 success rate. Uh, that's not good. It's awful. Do you know what the Patriots' success rate rushing on first down was yesterday? That would be 0%. They did not have a single, they did not have a single successful rushing play on first down yesterday. And how many times did they run the, uh, the football on first down? Too many. Given those numbers, Patriots offense had zero explosive plays before the fourth quarter. 
Zero explosive plays before the fourth quarter against a defense who gave up a number of explosive plays heading into this game with a quarterback that's more than capable of creating explosive plays. And so people would shoot back at me. I had somebody tweet at me yesterday, and they, they didn't do it in like a Twitter-like engagement rage. They, they did it genuinely. They said, well, Nick, they can't run the football, so what do you want them to do? You know what I, I want him to do is try to run the football in different ways. If you watch yesterday's game, it's a lot of the same stuff, right? Running smack dab in between the tackles. Boom, boom, boom. Running into that Jacksonville wall. So if you're Alex Van Pelt, do some things differently to get the most out of your run game. Nick, what would you do? See, this is what we do with this podcast. We come prepared. There are a number of different things that Van Pelt could have tried yesterday, and he pretty much tried none of them. How about a toss player or two? How about a pitch player or two to attack the perimeter, right? How about a jet sweep with one of your receivers? If Pop Douglas is sick, give Kendrick Bourne a jet sweep. Try to attack the perimeter with a jet sweep and see if you can get a big play out of it. How about wide receiver screens? We always talk about this, right? If you're not capable of running the football, especially on early downs, you can replace the run game with safe, quick passes to the wide receivers that act as your run game. If you continue to run into the brick wall on the early downs, then throw a wide receiver bubble screen, right? Throw one of those tunnel screens. Get Kendrick Bourne. You did it against Houston. Throw one of those bubble screens to Kendrick Bourne. Try to get five or six yards on the first down, right, on that first down play. There's a lot of things that you can do. How about this idea? And we talked about this on Friday. You have a very mobile athletic quarterback. Did you see any designed runs for Drake May yesterday? I, I, I can't remember one. Maybe there was one. But if your run game's not doing well, why would you not try to create conflict in the front seven of the Jacksonville defense by running some zone option, by running some read option from Drake May? How about you get him to pick up a first down? Caleb Williams ran for like 56 yards in week six against this defense. This defense is literally the worst defense against running quarterbacks. And there were almost no designed runs. I can't remember one. So how about some designed runs with the quarterback to try to get your run game going? You have to try to throw wrinkles. How about taking a snap in, in the pony formation? How about you try Antonio Gibson and Ramondre Stevenson in the backfield and you run pony to try to throw off the Jacksonville defense? There was none of that. It was the same old, same old over and over and over again. We talked about Jacksonville's defense being incredibly undisciplined. There was not a single trick play called yesterday. There wasn't a single trick play called against that ridiculously undisciplined defense of Jacksonville. There should have been at least two or three trick plays called yesterday against that defense to try to take advantage and get a chunk play. There was nothing. There was no creativity. The first 15 plays, again, that script, you had motion at the snap. You were you were moving May a lot more. And then it went to, let's establish the run. I don't know what it was, 1950s play calling. I just gave you six or seven different things that the offensive coordinator could have done in that game to try to get more out of the run game. And he did 0, 0.0 of those things. He just kept doing the same damn thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's called insanity, folks. Now let's get to the defense. Demarcus Covington, run defense again, again, and again, and again. I tweeted out that toy truck gif when it runs over the kid. That was the Patriots defense yesterday. Jacksonville ran the football on 22 of the last 23 plays. They just ran the football down their throat. Ran the football down their throat over and over and over again. We mentioned tackling on Friday's podcast, right? As we previewed this game, we talked about how yards after the contact, it, that's how Jacksonville's run game has survived a lot, and that's why their numbers are good. The Patriots had 10 missed tackles on 59 plays. So every six plays, you had a missed tackle from the defense. And as we know, this used to be one of the best tackling defenses in all of football. Last year, they were one of the best. Week one, they were fantastic. They have sucked tackling the last six weeks and they did it again yesterday they did it again yesterday 
It's demoralizing. It's demoralizing. When you're a defense and, and you're giving up those kinds of runs over and over and over again, it gets to be demoralizing. It, it should drive you crazy. And you should be you should be finding ways to combat that. Just like, just like when you look at the run game for the offense and you're doing the same things over again and you're not successful, same thing defensively. You continue to get run on and you have not been able to find ways to counteract that. You have not really adjusted at all. There are things you can do, folks. They don't look like they have any toughness against the run game, but there are things you can do. Demarcus Covington. How about you call a couple of run blitzes? How about you move the defensive line? I was listening to Teddy Johnson yesterday on NBC Sports Boston, talked about stunting the line, moving the line. How about you say to yourself, we're going to put six guys in the line of scrimmage. We're putting six guys in the line of scrimmage because we have to stop the run. And yes, we might get burnt on the back end once, but we can't have this football team get run over play after play. So we're going we're gonna to put six guys at the line of scrimmage. We're going to make a statement. You're not running the football against us. We have to stop this hemorrhaging. None of that. We saw none of it. Some of the st same strategic mistakes from the defensive end, right? You're dropping Jelani Tavai in coverage. Doesn't work. Shocker. You're dropping Joshua Uche into coverage. Guess what? It didn't work. Shocker. We saw it again yesterday. The lack of discipline on the edge. Dietrich Wise is absolutely lost. I don't know what he's doing. He's floating around the middle of the field, and Trevor Lawrence, whoop, Right on the outside, hits the edge. Boop, nobody there to contain the edge because Dietrich Wise is, I don't know what he's doing. He's walking around, looking up at the sky. The lack of pressure. This team can't get any pressure. They can't simulate pressure. They can't blitz pressure. They can't get pressure on the quarterback. Yesterday, according to Alex Barth, the Patriots had no sacks, no quarterback hits. They had two pressures the entire day. They pressured Trevor Lawrence twice. This team got abused at the line of scrimmage in the run game on both sides of the football, and their defense couldn't get a pass rush going. And their offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator did not do nearly enough to try to help this football team out. 